On this episode of Documental, we will be interviewing Mr. Stephen Kins on the topics of artificial intelligence and machine learning. Stephen, thanks for coming on. Pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. So to start, uh, I would like to ask you, what's one really cool slash interesting development in this field that you think the world should know about and why? Wow. Well, picking one, only one is hard. But OK, let's say I notice a new mole on my arm. The mole looks normal, but everyone's read about the dangers of skin cancer. So I want to have it checked. But just like most people, I'm really busy. Trying to get an appointment might take a while. And not only that, but I don't want to waste a doctor's valuable time on my false alarm. So what can I do instead? Well, I take a photo of the mole with my phone and use an app to send my photo for analysis by a trained AI engine. The answer comes back immediately. See a doctor. Just imagine the time saved and the mind's put at rest without having to do anything other than taking a photo and using an app. This app isn't available to everyone just yet, but it's not science fiction either. This AI-based application is being built and tested right now and has had already some incredible successes. In its early stages, it even corrected a world-class oncologist's diagnosis and saved the life of a patient. The possibilities for this sort of thing are endless. How about something not quite so serious that's really just for fun? I can take a still photo of myself and using another video from the internet, say as a favourite speech. I can animate my still picture so that it talks. I can have a dream, send us to the moon, sing on Broadway, or announce the latest news from the International Space Station. Who yeah, wouldn't want to try that? Uh, I think you've piqued our interest with those examples. Uh, can you give the viewers an introduction to what is artificial intelligence and machine learning? Well. Artificial intelligence, AI, has been in existence really since the 1950s. The concepts established way back then by a stellar group of cross-discipline academics and intellectuals are still what underpins the solutions now. But what's changed recently is the availability of data, computing power and education. AI is everywhere, even now. It's all around us, but we are just at the beginning of what it can do. AI is set to grow and evolve in our lives in ways that we can't even imagine right now. And of course, that has benefits and challenges. If AI can be used with good intentions, it can all be, also be used for bad, such as criminal activities. It's definitely a double-edged sword, and it's a tool set we all need to be aware of. You may have experienced AI a number of times already today without thinking about it. Perhaps you set your alarm with a voice assistant, Browse some videos suggested by your online streaming service, or simply use SatNav to get to a meeting. These are all different types of AI, and each with their own solution. You know, I think one of the greatest challenges that I noticed today is that we all experience these emerging technologies on a daily basis and lack a fundamental understanding of what they are and how they actually work. So with that said, what are these so-called solutions and how do they actually work? Yeah, you're right. Um, to many, AI is a branch of computing that allows developers to build software, tools, and methods that learn from their environment. And that's true to a certain extent. But each AI implementation is very specific. An AI that can drive a car can't play chess or order the shopping. This is called narrow AI, and it's where we are right now. The dream of a generalist AI that can learn to do many tasks is likely to be some way off. So to explain AI, let's think about how we'd get a computer to help us without using AI at all. Let's pick a simple example. Imagine we need to identify different types of fruit using a computer program. Now, a standard computer program is only as good as the logic you put in. So you'd have to define what makes an apple an apple so the computer could recognize it. Imagine this. If color equals green and shape equals sphere, then fruit equals apple. That's how the logic would work. But given all the different types of apples and all the different colours, you can imagine how long it would take to really define what makes an apple an apple for the computer. However, an AI machine learning system, on the other hand, would learn what probably makes an apple an apple using data and its own experience by looking at lots of examples of apples. Its eventual answer would likely be far more sophisticated than our non-AI logic and with very nuanced definitions. 
Then, with further training and no more computer coding, it could learn to spot an orange, a banana, a pineapple. And with the right feedback, it could learn different types of apple and maybe even predict if they are likely to be tasty. That's called categorization. And it's the same type of solution that we use for spam email filtering, for example. The AI learns to spot a likely spam email through experience and learning rather than being told that specific emails are spam emails. Now for something rather more complicated. If an AI robot is going to learn to walk, it could learn the actions it needs to take to stand up, balance and move in various directions without being told exactly what to do. To explain that better, imagine a human toddler learning to walk. She successfully stands up, wobbles a bit, then falls back down again with a bump. She's just learned how to stand up, but not how to balance. She had an immediate negative feedback on her performance, a sore bum. Over many more attempts and more positive and negative feedback, she'll learn how to balance, how to move her feet to walk in a straight line, then how to turn, and finally, how to run, jump, and skip. AI systems are programmed with the basic logic and how to deal with feedback responses, but they are left alone to learn the details of the movement, of standing up, walking, turning, and running over thousands of attempts. They may even find ways of achieving movement that weren't imagined at all by the human designers. That's fascinating stuff, Stephen. Can you give viewers a little bit more about your background and expertise? Well, I was a business consultant in financial services originally, and I advised some of the biggest banks in the world how to deploy technology. In some cases, that technology relied on AI. It occurred to me that AI is such a powerful tool that smaller companies would also benefit from it greatly. But it's currently so expensive to create your own bespoke AI agent doing what you need it to do. You need to rely heavily on experts in their field. And that's difficult and very expensive for anyone, especially a small business owner. My new venture that I'm going to release and talk about more in the coming months looks to democratise access to AI, giving the power of AI to small companies so they too can reap those benefits. Great. That wraps up our interview here. Uh, thank you, Stephen, so much for your insight. Uh, where can viewers contact you and continue this discussion? Well, have a look at my LinkedIn profile, the link below this video, and send me a message. Great. Thanks again. I'll talk to you soon. Have a good day. Bye-bye.